Okay, and the last AngloChemX worksheet. Okay. So, I think we want to use the fact that um, the arc length here. Okay, so this is the arc length. This is S. Um, <clears throat> And evidently it's going around more than just once. So I think we want to figure out how many times it goes around. So if you do 160 divided by 43, that would tell you how many times it goes around. And so that looks like a little less than four times. If it went around four times, the angular distance would be four times two pi radian. So this will tell us how many times it goes around. And if we multiply that by two pi, it tells us what the angular distance it goes through. We know the initial speed is zero. And we know the um, angular acceleration. And now we know the angular distance. So I think we want to use VF squared equals VI squared plus two AD where whatever we get for this times 2 pi will be the d. We know the acceleration. The initial speed is 0, and solve for the final. Okay, this is going to be using the same equation, v i squared equals v i squared plus 2 a d. We know what the angle looks, we know the acceleration, okay, we know what the initial, or excuse me, the, the final speed is, we know what the final speed is, um, so let's see, we ne need to know what d is, um, okay, so this would be the arc length. So the arc length is 52.5, R would be 0.08, and so we could figure out the angular distance theta. And so once we know that, we know the angular acceleration, we know what the um, final speed is, so we want to find the initial. If you ever get a chance to go to Fermilab, definitely do it. It's pretty cool. Um, definitely recommend it. It's where they did some of the experiments for, you know, figuring the different particles. Um, when you have atom smashers, you know, smash things together and you get all these different particles that come out of it. It's over in Illinois. It's pretty cool. Close to Chicago. Um, okay. Okay, so we know what the initial angular speed is. And we're going to complete one trip in that amount of time. So I think we want to use d equals vit plus one half a t squared. We know what the initial speed is. We know the time, it has to be in seconds by the way. Um, we know it's one trip, so that's 2 pi. We want to find the acceleration, so solve for acceleration.
Okay. Um, we want to use the same equation for this one. D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. Must be an alpha, sorry about that. We know the acceleration. We um, know the time. Um, be careful here, the initial angular speed is not zero because it gives us this note here that normally the hour hand travels one full rotation in 12 hours. So we can use D equals V bar T, I'm calling it VI so you remember to plug in over here, and this will be 2 pi, one whole ro rotation in 12 hours, but we have to change it in the seconds and then solve for that velocity, and that will come in over here. Then we know the time, 120 seconds, 120 seconds. We know the acceleration. We now know the velocity, found it from over here, so you can find the displacement. Okay, so for this one we're going to use um, VF equals VI plus AT, and we know what the final speed is, and we know what the initial speed is, and we know the acceleration, and so we can solve for um, the time, how long it takes. Okay. And next page. Okay. So we know it starts from rest. We know what the final speed is. We know the acceleration. We didn't want to know how long it takes to reach that speed. So that would be VF equals VI plus AT. And so we know the final speed. We know the initial speed is rest, and we know the acceleration, so it's off for time. Okay, this one here is going to be D equals V bar T. It gives us the initial speed and the final speed. Plug those in. Um, it gives us um, the angular displacement, the distance, and so we can solve for time. Okay, so for this one, I believe we can use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2... A D. We know um, we know the initial speed. We know the acceleration. We know the distance. So we can solve for the final speed. Okay, so this says it starts at rest. Um, I think we can use D equals V bar T for this one. We know it starts from rest. We know um, we know it goes through 10 revolutions, so the distance. Oh, that has to be multiplied by 2 pi. Okay, We know the time, and so we can solve for omega f, the final speed. Okay, the last one.
Okay, so we know what the speed is, initial speed. We know the time. Um, we know the distance. We want to know the angle of acceleration. So I think we want to use d equals vit plus one half a t squared. Again, we know what the distance is. We know what the initial speed is. We know the time, and so we could solve for acceleration.